Here's another thermodynamic process called an adiabatic process. And in an adiabatic process, we don't let energy enter or leave the system in the form of heat, Q. Such a system, usually it can be in an insulator, uh, or it could happen very, very rapidly so that there's not enough time for the heat to transfer out or into the system by the time the piston has either done work on the gas or the gas has done work on the environment. So if we can let Q be zero, our first law of thermodynamics is just that change in internal energy is equal to the work done on the gas. So if you take a look at the little diagram over here, you're either going to expand or press on the gas so quickly that Q is equal to zero and all of the change in the internal energy inside of the gas happens because of the work done on or by the piston. Okay. Um, all right, so let's take a look at a problem. Let's say you've got a car engine, operates at a really high frequency, 1800 RPMs, uh, and the time for the piston to move during that time is 10 milliseconds. That's really quick. Uh, since heat transfer takes a long time, uh, we can consider it to be an adiabatic process. And uh, what this question is asking us is to find the work done by the gas on the piston during this expansion by assuming the engine cylinder has 0.1 moles of an ideal monatomic gas in it going from a temperature of 1200 degrees Kelvin, a high temperature, to a lower temperature as it expands uh, so a temperature reduces to 400 uh, Kelvin. Alright, so you starting with our first law of thermodynamics and letting Q equals zero, we get delta U equals the work. Uh, using this form of uh, solving for delta U then we can use three halves and our delta T and it's a simple substitution of the stuff given in the problem, the information given in the problem, and we'd find out that delta U was negative 997 joules. So the work done on the gas is negative 977 joules, which means the work done on the environment is going to be positive 997 joules. And that's how you can approach, one way you can approach an adiabatic process problem.